It's the time you've all been waiting for. In this video, we are gonna actually create a React and Redux application. To start off, I'm just gonna quickly rename some files and variables. So rather than having main, I'm gonna have users. And just make sure that we have the correct uppercase and lowercase for the actual variable name and then for the import statement as well. So I've renamed the component main to users and we shall rename that component file not the folder to users as well we shall rename the reducer to users as we're going to have more than one user in this application and of course now we've renamed that file we need to update our store so it will be the users file and the users reducer Okay, that should be everything we need to rename. And I've just missed the user reducer function itself. So we'll call that users reducer. Okay, so I think I've renamed everything correctly. If not, we'll get an error and we'll find out about that later on. To start off with, I just wanna have a quick discussion about presentational components in React and then container components in Redux. This is a really important concept that you need to understand and we will be using in this application and you should use in all React Redux applications. If you head on over to the Redux documentation and go to the usage with React section, you will have a little sort of table about presentational components and container components. And just to kind of quickly explain what these are. So a presentational component is gonna be a React component and that is simply going to take props and then render those props out or do whatever it wants to do with those props. So it's not gonna have state. And a container component is gonna be our Redux component and that is gonna handle our state. So it's gonna handle our data fetching, our state updates. And as you can see in this table here, presentational components don't know and don't care about Redux because all they do is just take in some props and then do something with those props. Whereas container components obviously do care about Redux because they do use Redux. And they subscribe to a Redux state and they dispatch Redux actions. This should all sound really familiar by now. So that's just a quick explanation of the difference between a presentational component, so a pure React component, and then a container component which is gonna have Redux within it. So let's get started by creating our first container. And as you'll see, we already have our containers folder. Let's go ahead and create a users.js container file. Now I've called all of these files users. It's kind of generally the convention to either have users as all of them, or it might be user container, user component, and some people prefer to have these uppercase as the first letter. That's just up to you, that's a personal preference and obviously depending on the standard you have for your project. For this, I'm just gonna keep it simple and keep it as users. So the first thing we need when we have our user container is to import something called connect. And that connect comes from React Redux which as you know, is obviously what is gonna connect React and Redux together. And it's something we installed in the last video. So that is gonna be the thing that allows us to connect React to Redux. So we can pass state from our container component to our React presentational component. Now let's go ahead and just kind of boilerplate out what's gonna go on here. So I'm gonna have a constant and it's gonna be our users container. And this is gonna equal the connect function. And then we're gonna pass some things into this function that we'll find out about later on. We then have a, another call to this connect function. And within this, we pass our React component. In our case, it's gonna be our users component. So let's go ahead and import that component. So users from, and I believe it's dot dot components forward slash users. So that's gonna be our React component. 
And hopefully with this kind of really simple boilerplate, you can kind of see what might be happening here. So what's going to happen is we have our connect function, which is react redux. And we're going to pass in some redux things here. And then we're going to pass in our react component to that. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our state that redux handles and it's going to pass our state as props to our react component so that within our react component anything that we pass in here we can access as props and that will all make a lot of sense in a bit let's go ahead and export default and we shall export our users container as i mentioned earlier we know that our container will provide state to our react components via props now you could do this manually by passing in the props to every component you wanted but that would get very tedious very very quickly so react redux gives you a component that takes your redux store and then passes it to your containers which in turn pass that state to your react components it sounds a little bit complicated but it's not don't worry let's go ahead and see how that works and how we use that so in our index.js file let's go ahead and import something called provider miss the e provider from react dash redux now provider is simply a react component which takes your store as a prop and then passes that store as props to any components that are its children and we'll see that in a second so if we go ahead and also import our users store as we're going to need to pass that to our provider as a prop from dot slash store okay so that's all we need to import so let's go ahead and use our provider component that react redux provides so in our render function we are simply going to wrap our users component our react component in a provider component so let's go ahead and do that so we have our provider component and we're going to pass in our users component to it like that so now our provider component is the parent and our users component is the child and you can pass as many components in here as you want so you might have users you might have i don't know images or whatever whatever you want you can pass as many of those as you like as children and they will all have access to the store provided by react redux but we have to do another thing to make sure that works so at the moment this is our users component so it's our react component whereas we actually need it to be our redux container component as this is what is going to have our state and all we need to do is just change this to containers so this is now our redux react container which as we know connects some state to our react component and the final thing we need to do is we need to pass our store to our provider component and you do that simply as a prop so in our case it's going to be our users store so let's just recap what's going on here we're importing a provider component from react redux we then pass our Redux store to that provider component. We then give that provider component some child components, the components that we write, which are actually Redux containers. And these containers will map our state to props and give our state to our props in the React components. And you'll see that in a second. So if you think about it, we've just got our Redux store here in a provider component and our users component get 
get access to that store via props. That's kind of exactly what's going on. It's nice and simple. Might not seem like it, but trust me it is. So remember that this is our Redux container, not our React component. So it's this container here. Okay, let's go ahead and start to use the connect function and get our state to our React component as props. To do this, we are gonna use a function called map state to props, which actually explains exactly what it does in the name. So we map our state to our props. So this is just a simple function. And we're gonna pass in our state to this function and we are going to return an object. And within this object, let's just go ahead and return, I don't know, let's return a prop called data and let's just make it a string called test at the moment. And then let's go ahead and pass in our map state to props function to connect. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used the map state to props function, which is going to take our state, our Redux state, and give it to our React component as props. And in this case, we're gonna have a prop called data in our React component that's gonna have the value of test. Normally it would be something from our state, but because we don't really have a state at the moment, it's just gonna be the word test. I then pass this function to connect. And what connect will do is it will call this function and then make sure that our React component gets this object here as props with the correct values here. With our state mapped to our props in a kind of fakey hacky way, we can go ahead and just look at how our component will get those props. So if we just go ahead and in our React users component, just in curly braces, let's render out props.data. And this will just show you that we are now connected and that React and Redux are working and playing together. So you save that. Uh, I've got my webpack running here, compiling my code and spitting out a server. So if we go to localhost 8080, we should refresh and see the word test. So you can see now that our React and Redux are connected together, which is great and exactly what we want. But obviously it's in a really hacky, rubbish way that isn't very useful because we're just rendering out the word test. The next step is to go ahead and actually use our users reducer and get some data for our users. And as this video is already pretty long, I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the next video. So if you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment. It really helps me out and really makes me wanna make more videos for you guys and girls. So I'll catch you in the next video.